Okay, so what we're going to do today is uh, Dean's going to come and adjust the cameras, I think, in a minute here. But um, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the unit circle. We're going to continue on with from the last session. And then we're also going to uh, talk about trig function properties. And I'll explain a little more why we call these things functions. And so in the first segment, we're going to practice using the unit circle with the 16 angles that we've seen previously. And then we're going to talk about these properties in segment two and segment three. And then we'll practice with those trig properties in segment four today. <coughs> and we'll try to be done by 10 minutes to 12. Okay. Uh, once again, there's tutor help available for you in room 177. Please use them as a resource and also form a little study group with classmates because uh, that's oftentimes the best way to learn this. I've said that before is by you folks uh, actually verbalizing the material. And these are the resource center hours. And I talked about this quiz that you folks will do by next Wednesday night over in the resource center. I have a password set up on that for MathXL, so you have to check yourself into our testing room there at the service counter. Okay. There was a problem the other day, and we'll come bring the camera over to this uh, screen. There was a problem the other day that I totally ignored that someone had asked about, so I wanted to just play a little catch up here. And this is from the right triangle trig material, which we had over in 8.1. So this is question 55 out of the book. We have a 300 foot tall building with the sun in the sky and it cast a shadow, the sun cast a shadow on the level ground down here of 50 feet. So here's our shadow, here's a sketch of it. Then I draw a separate little geometry sketch to sort of look at the trigonometry involved. So here's the right triangle with an unknown angle of elevation angle of elevation. And here's this opposite side to this angle of elevation, 300 feet. And then here's the adjacent side right next to the angle of 50 feet. So we've learned that the ratio of the opposite divided by the adjacent side to an angle, 300 feet over 50 feet is equal to the tangent of this angle of elevation. Notice that the ratio values are both length units of feet and they reduce out. And so as I said in the previous session, this ratio is a pure number, six, 300 divided by 50. That's the angle. Now, at that point, we have not yet learned how to find this angle, which is buried inside this function. <coughs> but what we do remember from our algebra background, what we do remember from our algebra background is that if we want to get at what is inside here as our unknown, then we have to essentially undo this process that created this function result. And the way we do that is we apply an inverse. So even though we haven't talked about that yet in this course, what we can do is we can use a key on our calculator called the inverse tangent key, and it's on the tangent key of your calculator. And we will apply that, but we want to make sure we're in degree mode when we do that. So we put our calculator in degree mode, which I'll do in just a second. We then uh, take and take the inverse tangent of the value 6, and that gives us back the calculated value of 80.5 degrees approximately. And let's go over to the calculator. Oh, the other thing I want to point out, this whole thing, that we, these 16 angles we talked about previously, and we started talking about our unit circle idea. That whole, all that material is mainly there to give you a mental feeling for the kind of results you should get when you punch a calculator. It's a, it's an, the intention there is to have some skill in your brain that so when you punch that calculator, you're confident in the result you get. Very important. So we knew from previous discussion that the tangent of 45 degrees is the slope of this terminal side here, and that's 1. Now, the tangent of our unknown angle here is 6, much bigger than 1. So we know that the angle of elevation is much steeper than that 45 degree angle. So with that in mind, then, we go grab our calculator and see what we get. So we turn our calculator on, 
we look at the mode and make sure we're in degree mode, which we are. And the way we get there, if I wanted to go to radian mode, I would come down here and I would simply hit the enter key, and now the calculator's in radian mode. Okay? So I want to make sure I'm in degree mode, so I come over here onto degrees and I hit enter, and now it locks it into degree mode. Now I quit back to the home screen, and on my tangent key, I have to shift and hit the tangent key, and it gives me the inverse tangent function, which we'll talk about, as I said, later in the course. And we're going to insert the ratio right here, the ratio. And here comes the answer, about 80.5 degrees. All right? About 80.5 degrees. Okay, Any questions on that? All right. Okay, let's now come back to the unit circle. And, uh, you know, while we've got the computer screen up here, let me, let me do the following, which is a handout I gave you earlier. Take a look at this. And I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit more here on this. That should be pretty close, pretty accurate, pretty good. Okay. So here is this unit circle, a circle of radius, radius equals one, and here along the edge are the 16 angles in radian measure. You should be comfortable with all of that, I hope. Everybody okay with that? All right. And so here we go. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to take pi radians and cut it into six, that would be equivalent to 180 divided by six, which would be 30 degrees. And that's going to end up the terminal side will sit right here. So I've just placed the label on the edge here, which is the radian measure of this central angle equivalent to 30 degrees here pi over 6 radians. Okay? Now, there are five numbers that I spoke of in the last session. Zero, over here on the right, zero, a half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and 1. The y value here is the sine of the angle. Everybody remember that? I hope. Okay, the y value is the sine of the angle. So as the angle starts at zero and increases towards 90 degrees, these y readings on the circle are growing. And when we're at 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians, we're, the sine reading here is exactly one half. We did the geometry in the last session about that, why that's true. Then when you get up to 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians, the height here becomes exactly square root of 2 over 2. And then similarly, when you move to 60 degrees, it's clear up here at square root of 3 over 2. And then finally, when you get to 90 degrees, it's clear up here at 1. And look what happens as you let the angle progress past 90 degrees, past 90 degrees the y readings on that circle are dropping down, aren't they? Aren't they coming down in value? And when you get right here to 120 degrees, or 2 pi over 3 radians, the height there exactly matches the height over here. So this height is square root of 3 over 2. Coming down, square root of 2 over 2, to 1 half, down to 0. And then those y values past 180, as you move down into the third quadrant, the y values are clearly negative, heading towards negative 1. Make sense? Okay. So this is a visual aid for you to help you understand the, uh, 
the values for these 16 various angles in their radian measure shown here or in degree measure. If this was 30 degrees here, it's 45, 60, 90, 120, etc. Questions? Confusion? Okay, so the Y readings are the what ratio? The sine ratio, aren't they? <coughs> the values of the sine of the angle, the Y readings. The X readings are shown here on the X axis as the horizontal leg of these triangles that you see. And those values I have written up here on the scaling, 0, a half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and 1. Again, same numbers. So the cosine of 60 degrees, or pi over 3 <coughs> radians, here's 60 degrees, you mentally think of where this sits, and then the cosine of it is this leg right here. It's clearly one half. Clearly one half. All right. One other thing while I have this image up here. We remember that, I'm going to write it on here, S equals R times theta. Right? Good. Okay. If the radius is 1, as it is here on this unit circle, then S is equal to the arc length, right? Mm -hmm. The arc length is equal to the theta measure in radians. So the arc length, which is the length over here, folks, this is another way of you thinking of this, this arc length over here, when you're at 30 degrees, when you're at 30 degrees, the arc length over here is actually exactly the length pi over 6 as a real number. And when you're at 40, that's the reason I put the radian measure out here on the edge. Because when you then are at 45 degrees, this length is greater. It's now pi over 4. The length is pi over 3 when you're here. The arc length all the way up to here, a quarter circle's arc length, is pi over 4 on the unit circle. And when you get halfway around, it's pi. Okay. So that's a, that unit circle is a very handy tool for you to have some mental imaging going on. Questions? Okay. That either means there's a high level of confusion or you've got it, one or the other. I'm not sure until I sort of see how you do on a quiz or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was writing notes on my paper, and I missed the beginning of that, so, yeah. Which part? Just the beginning, and then, so the rest of it didn't make sense. You mean about the arc about length? About the arc. About the arc length? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me just real quickly reiterate that. We know that arc length on a circle is equal to the radius times the theta central angle, where we measure that angle in radians. If we let that radius be 1, if we let that be 1, then the arc length is a measure of the central angle in radian measure. So at 30 degrees here, this length of arc right here is pi over 6, a little more than a half. That, that length is a little, and also, look at this, folks. Look at this arc. Isn't that a little more, isn't that a little longer than this height right here? This height is exactly 1 half. Isn't that arc length right there a little more than a half? And see, mentally, you know pi is a little bigger than 3 over 6. That result right there is a little bigger than a half. Okay? So the arc length on the unit circle is the measure, uh, is another, is the radian measure of the angle on the unit circle. Does this only hold true on the, uh, the radius is 1? Yes. Okay. That's because of what you see up here is when you let that R be 1, then you're dealing with the arc length exactly <laughs> matching. The arc length exactly matches the radian measure. So this will help us this one, if we have any other things? Correct. Okay. I was just trying to apply well, this to others. So well, it will, for different trig, it will for different trig ratios and for different applications. And so we'll sort of see that happen. <coughs> okay. Without belaboring that anymore, let's go back up here, and I want to actually have you practice, and I'm going to get my sticks out, and you folks have your pencils or pens in your hand. So, first of all, you have to know where the angle is, don't you? 
you have to clearly know where the angle sits. Otherwise, you might as well close your book and not take trig. Okay, you got to know where the angle is. Okay, so let's. Uh, why don't we start with degrees? Hold your pencils in the air at 150 degrees standard angle. 150 degrees. Then look around the room. See if you're holding your pencil in the same direction. Pretty good. I see some that I'm not going to point out individuals, but here we go. Watch. Watch this. 150 degrees. That's 30 less than 180. Just 30 less than 180. I'm going to get back in the camera. Here. Okay. So I come on over. Here's my 180, and I back up 30 degrees. And that's the way most of you were holding your pencil. Okay? What's the sign of that angle, 150 degrees? The sign of 150 degrees. It's this length right here, isn't it? Thinking of this as a length one? one it's one half. half. It's one half. Pos it's, up, it's Y. It's a Y reading. It's a half. Okay? So you needed to know the angle first. Then you can pick up the ratio. Mm -hmm. Does the all students take calc thing? What? Does the all students take calc thing? Is that what tells you whether it's positive or negative? Does the what thing? Oh, all, all students, students take calc. calc. They In each quadrant, all, all, okay. all are positive. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. There's all these. Positive. There's all these little things like that. But <laughs> <laughs> there's different things that people, in high school instructors or other instructors, use to help people remember that. I'll, I'll probably throw those up here on the board sometime in the future. Let's back up to how about two-thirds pi? Two-thirds pi. Hold your pencil at two-thirds pi. I'm holding my, my umbrella at pi. Two-thirds of pi. Two-thirds of that arc length on the unit circle, isn't it? Two-thirds of pi. It's up here. What's the sign? Square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. Good. That was in your head, too. That was good. That's okay. In there. Good job. Square root of 3 over 2. Everybody see that mentally? Visu I mean, visually and mentally? It's this height right here off that geometry problems we did the other day. It's the height right here. Okay. Uh, what's the cosine? Same angle of 2 uh, thirds pi. One half. The cosine. Be careful. Negative one, half. negative one half. Very good. Negative. Right? Negative one half. The cosine of two thirds pi is negative one half. Here. Okay, let me just put that up on the board so I don't twist things around here too much. Here's what we just did. We were mentally imaging 150 degrees, and we were asking the question, what's the sign of that? It's right here, one half. So the sine of 150 degrees equals one half. Okay. Then I ask you. I said, "Where is two thirds pi?" Well, two thirds pi is up here. So if you're thinking unit circle, radius one, this is two thirds of pi on the arc length. It's also the radian measure of that central <coughs> angle. And I asked the sine of it. That was square root of 3 over 2. Off that mental image. And then we also ask what the cosine was. So this is the way you write this stuff down. Is you have this in your head, and you can then provide the exact answers there. How many of you do not feel like you are following this? Do not. Very few of you. Okay, come see me if you're having confusion so we can work together on it and I'll talk you through it. Okay, the cosine are the x readings, the sine readings are the y readings. This value is about what as a decimal? Uh, 0. 0.806 or whatever? You're, you're close. Point. Point, 0.866. Okay. 0.866. This is clearly Point negative five. 0. 0.5. Okay. Right? Okay. So 
let's say, let's come back to the calculator now. I want to point out to you why this is so critical. Come back to the calculator for a second. And let's say I want to punch cosine, or excuse me, sine of 2 pi divided by 3. Sine of 2 pi divided by 3. I punch that, and I get this result. What's wrong? You're we, right. we know just from our mental image we just did, Right? We've got that mental image. We know this answer should be square root of 3 over 2 or 0.866 positive. This is garbage. What's wrong? Yeah. The mode I'm in. See, I've just done a problem previously in degree mode, and it, this is going to happen to you. You're going to punch your calculator, and you're going to have garbage sitting there, and you better not write garbage down on your paper, or particularly if it's a quiz or a test. So I'm giving you little tools like those mental images. That unit circle is absolutely critical for you to be able to catch mistakes. Now, we can fix this real quickly without having to repunch this. We just go back and change the mode to radian mode for measuring the angle. And then I quit. And now I repunch. I just simply hit Enter. And it comes back and gives me the correct reading to confirm what I'd written down on the paper. OK. That was a nice illustration of places I make mistakes frequently, but I usually catch those mistakes because I have thought about what kind of result I should get first. All right. Okay. Let's, let's play with this unit circle just for another moment or two. And you're just going to have to get together with each other, use your pencil, use little sketches like you see me doing here. And these are the kind of sketches I'd like to see in your homework. Instead of just writing a list of answers down when they're asking for what the trig ratios are, just draw a little tiny sketch. It only takes a second. It makes the class a little, makes the work a little more artistic. OK. Uh, here we go. Got a good one for you. Uh-oh. <laughs> OK. Let's do. Let's do the sine of minus 26 degrees without your calculator first. Don't touch that calculator. I want you to predict that answer. I want you to predict the answer. So I'm going to draw myself a little mental sketch. Minus 26 degrees. Sits right there on my unit circle. All right. If I was at 30 degrees here, I know this would be minus 1 half, right? If I was at 30 degrees. 26 degrees, I'm going to expect this answer to be near minus 1 half, right? But a little bit larger or smaller in value? Careful. It's a negative number. That's a big negative number. We expect a number to be a little bigger in its absolute sense, in its, in its real sense, a little bit bigger than negative a half. Now think about negative a half. Negative a quarter would be bigger. Right? OK. So now you turn your calculator on and punch this. Back to the calculator. <coughs> oh, look at this. The previous problem. What mode am I in, folks? Be careful. Radiant. Careful. Uh, we corrected ourselves, didn't we? <laughs> See this second answer here? But if I'm not sure, I just hit mode. I'm in radian measure. Oh, I am. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You're, you're right. <laughs> so I want to be in degree measure. I quit. And now I punch sine of negative 26. I'm in degree mode. Ah, see that result? Sine of negative 26 degrees is about negative 0.4. Four. 
Pure number, approximately, written out to about four decimal place accuracy. That's why, this is why I want you to have the unit circle in your head and know those 16 angles. Because you're not going to be doing much stuff in life or in other courses you take that are on those 16 angles. But you're frequently going to be doing things like this. And so you need to have a sense of the kind of result you should expect. All right. Anybody want to do another one and let you do it? Okay, I see some heads going up and down. Okay. So let's, let's do a couple more, and then we'll end this segment and move on to some properties. Okay. Let's see. Let's stick with sine and cosine for a minute. Okay. And let's stick with our 16 angles. See if you can write down the exact answer for this with a little sketch drawn first, a little sketch of where it sits. It's actually kind of fun once you get in the, into the routine, a little game you can play. not to look at the picture in the book or in the notes I gave you. <laughs> Try to mentally image where 7 pi over 4 is. How many have it? A bunch of you still are writing. Let's, let me go ahead here and see if you're on the right track. 7 pi, when I see something like this, and even if it's not one of our 16 angles, I kind of try to image where this thing sits. Now, I know 8 pi over 4 is right here, all the way around, right? I am backing up a quarter pi to get to 7 pi over 4. And I know a quarter pi is right here, right? So I back up a quarter pi, and I'm at 7 pi over 4 for this big central angle. <coughs> central angle here, 7 pi over 4. And then I'm asked the question, what's the cosine? And the cosine reading, I know this is a 45 degree angle sitting right there, so I know these legs are identical. And the cosine reading is the x reading, remember. It's square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2 over 2. All right. I've got one more quick item since we were uh, kind of late starting the recording today. So in this first segment, one more quick item. I want to show you a program I wrote years ago when the graphing calculators first came out. <coughs> And I will give it to you all later this term, but not until you've proven to me that you can do these things mentally. Okay. So watch this. I go to program, and I go to this program I'm calling circular functions, and here comes an interesting picture. Now, if I hit the enter key, it'll pause. So if I pause it about right there, that's pretty close to 225 degrees, okay, right? So I'm working on building a unit circle here, and actually what I'm drawing here is something we'll get to in a week or so, the actual tangent function, the graph of the tangent function. So I'm just going to let it roll, and I just want to sort of get you excited about this 
little program so you'll look forward to getting it after you know this stuff mentally. Okay? What angle were we just at? 7 pi over 4, which is 315 degrees, right? So if I turn trace on, if I turn trace on, you'll notice there's something funny going on here. It shows X and Y. Oh, interesting. And this thing called T. T is the angle in degree measure. So let me put 315 in there for T in the trace mode. So here is the cosine reading at the bottom square root of 2 over 2, 0.707 approximately. The X reading right there of this point is 0.707. The Y reading is the sine <coughs> reading, the sine reading of that angle right there. And then if I go down arrow, it'll jump me onto the other graph, and it's sitting right over here, folks. And what this is, is this is the tangent reading sitting right here. The y value right here is the tangent of 315 degrees. 315 degrees, the tangent reading. And this number right here is the radian measure of 300, equivalent to 315 degrees, 5.5 approximately radians. Think about that. It takes a little over 6 to go all the way around, doesn't it? a little over six radians to go all the way around, and we're almost all the way around, aren't we, at 315 degrees? Yeah, so that's 5.5 radians, approximately, okay, to get around there. So that's a little program that's in the calculator, and it works for any angles, any angles that you'd have. Okay, let's go ahead and end this segment, Dean, and then we'll uh, go ahead and move on to the properties here in a second.